little baby tail whip. Little baby one. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the channel. I am Bob with Games RC. And today, <laughs> we have the Jeg Stinger or the uh, GeForce Genova clone. And I decided to take it to the track, <laughs> see how it would do. And, uh, well, without further ado, let's, uh, let's take you to the, the first qualifier in 40 plus e-buggy. Enjoy. You guys are ready? On the tongue. Oh, you better let that other car get by there. Gotta watch that guy, Scott. Oh, I got, I got a hub that popped out right there. Never mind. Hey, can you snap that back in? Ah, yeah, the screw is gone. Yeah. Okay, so the part that popped off is going to be this front camera link right here. Uh, this car did not come with uh, adjustable turnbuckles at all. I believe that the Genova does come with them. Additionally, uh, I didn't want to put a bunch of money into this car because I know that I'm not going to be tracking it for very long. So I just grabbed some links from the local hobby shop. Um, these, this style, this is the style camber link that it should be. So we get that all squared away and we go on to round two of 40 plus two wheel drive buggy all right I've officially made it more than one lap. Oh, I almost opened my big fat mouth. Hey, sorry, Dan.
baby tail whip. Little baby one. Woo! Good girl. All the way through it. Woo! I don't even know how I ended up. Where'd I end up, Kim? Third. Third. So she made it through an entire race. As you can tell by the end there, I was actually kind of happy. So the Jeg Stinger or uh, G-Force Genova made it through an entire qualifier. Um, and I ended up in third place. So not last is good any day that I'm racing 110 scale. Um, and also the fact that this guy is a rear motor, so traction is little to none, especially if I hit any of the, if, if you hit anything outside the groove, um, it's really dusty and that dust will get onto your prep tires. So you are going to lose traction for, for just a couple of seconds. I am chopping up the races a little bit just to make it so that the video doesn't drag out too long. I'm going to take you back to the A main and then we'll come back one last time and talk about all the changes that I've made since this race uh, because there is going to be a round two. Drive buggy, 40 plus, A main. Oh, right, first mile, ready. That's it. Driver you got enough ready. room? First corner. My slipper clutch is gone. Something's not happy. Yeah, my slipper clutch is going. Yeah, I have no throttle. Oh, come on. I knew if 
something was wrong. about the Jags Stinger. Um, not a track car by any means. And I, I mean, maybe there are some who would say, maybe there are some who would say off-road track, possibly. Um, I, I just, I have to disagree. I'm going to run this thing one more time. I've made some changes to the vehicle itself, and I'm getting ready to go over that in a second. And then this guy's going to go on the shelf, um, but it'd be done with it. I'll probably pick up a Team Associated B6.4 or like a used 6.3, 2, or 1. Um, I'm really kind of enjoying 10 scale racing, and I've got a carpet track that's somewhat near me. Hopefully there will be some more... 10 scale racing footage coming out soon. That's <laughs> that's a little bit better than what you're seeing here. Um, on the next round, I'm gonna run my associated B74.1. Um, so it'll be a little more exciting than watching the two wheel drive. But those will be, those will be separate videos. All right, so in the video you saw some slight different in the video you saw some slight differences in the car Let's see if i can get a little bit better of a shot with some better lighting here here we go so the first thing that i'll talk about is the shock package these shocks are absolutely terrible um they're they're not smooth at all and the sh the shock caps like to like to pop off. Um, I've tried everything in the world, including having a little bit of negative rebound, and I'm still blowing shock caps. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if uh, during the next run that I blow a shock at some point. Um, I did change the weight. Of the shock oil I had 40 all the way around um, and the car came the 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 Jegs car came with god it had to be like 50 or 60 weight oil in these shocks it was terrible so I thought dropping to 40 was about right it seemed to seem to be what was about right and uh, apparently still too thick uh, car wasn't wasn't uh, transitioning enough in the corners um and the rear end was still sliding out pretty heavily the other the other thing besides the shock package that i've changed on the car is i went uh i went up in the diff weight for the rear um it does have a gear diff on it so i went up to a um, i believe during this race that i had 3k in it and I now have uh, seven, yeah, 7,000. God, that's terrible lighting. Might even be better if I do that. So I now have 7,000 weight in the in the diff. Um, and again, there's another, you know, another downfall. If it was running on carpet, a gear diff would be fine. But everybody else, you know, in their newer, newer vehicles is running a ball diff. So, um, and, you can see the motor that's in it now. Um, I don't think that I showed the other motor that was in here, but the motor that's in here now is a 5,900 kV motor. And uh, the other one, it was either on its way out or it, it just did not have any kind of uh, top end at all. This one's a, uh, significantly different. 
Um, and typically in, in this class, you would see a 17.5 turn motor. Everybody at the track knows that I'm, I'm beginner and I'm new. Um, so they're not concerned about what motor I'm running, which is good. Um, because I need every, every advantage in the world to be able to keep up. So we'll see if this, if, if there's too much of a difference, I may not run in the main, but we'll have to see in the next race. Um, the other thing that I did is I put washers on all of the camber links, uh, and hopefully that will stop them from completely popping off or popping out. Um, I actually did it back here too. I don't know if you'll be able to see Get the gimbal out of the way just to get a little bit more stability out of the car so that I don't DNF again. I mean, I technically DNF'd two races today. So um, in my opinion, if you can't make it through three heats of racing, why why are you going out? So hopefully this will, will fix things. The other thing that I did on this vehicle is because of the way the steering system is set up. Um, let's see if I can get down in here. This rack right here. See right where I'm pointing at? Is on a rod that runs up and down there. And it loosens up on its own. Because it's just down into plastic. So what I did was, I just drilled a hole right there so that I could reach in there with a screwdriver and tighten it back up. I'm sure that it's it's lost some of its integrity, but I mean, I'm not really concerned at this point. It's better to lose a little bit of integrity and be able to tighten a bolt that's gonna stop you from being able to race. That way, you don't have to take the whole front end of the car apart. I'm trying to think of what else that I've done. Obviously, it's an upgraded ESC. Um, it's a 120 amp uh, quick run censored ESC. It is not running in censored mode because it's got a four pole motor on it. Um, that's pretty much gonna wrap up the changes and the, and the things that I've done extra to it. Oh, I this is the wing that you would get with a team associated. As you can see, it's very similar to that one right there. Um, this was a solid wing and I don't think I have it anymore. And it was, it was really ugly, so it had to go. Other than that, that's going to be it. I mean, I added a, a lot of weight to the front of the car. So um, in my testing that I've done, this helped significantly on power for steering. Um, we'll have to see if the shock package change and me adding all that weight really does balance the car out um, a little bit better on the jumps. But we will find out. Stay tuned for the next one. Thank you guys for watching.